Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 28. This one is a carbon skinned Corsell cord 21 millimeter thick panel with about 0.8 millimeter skins. It's vacuum infused. The key concepts here are we're going to use grooved core and the surface ply is a five harness satin woven. Having a look at the laminate schedule, you can see an estimate of the resin uptake for the grooved core. And this grooved core acts as the flow media here. So the resin flows through the grooves and then up and wets out the skin. And here's a model showing the dimensions of the grooves. They're two millimeters deep, uh, one millimeter wide roughly on 15 millimeter centers. To estimate the resin volume, um, because it's on both sides, I'm just going to use a, a simplified block. Here's a quick look at the estimate and it gives about 0.7 kilo. And this surface ply is a about 400 gram five harness satin woven carbon and that just means that instead of a one up one over like a normal plain weave this every fifth toe goes up and over the other so it's asymmetrical. Um, you can see more of the the red direction toe uh, up and this gives it good drapeability better covering curved surfaces reduce crimp from fewer ups and downs makes it a little bit stronger but it does have an asymmetric ply it's not woven where it is naturally balanced so here's a look at the layup this first ply going down on this release coated G10 sheet. I'm going to try some of this spray adhesive here, which is somebody gave me. Um, it is epoxy soluble and it's spraying really chunky. So I'm going to go back and use the um, 3M77. Here's a look at the biax, which is the second ply facing the core. This is also 400 gram. It's a stitched material. It's really just two unis attached together. And here's the core. You can see the flow grooves. It's also perforated so the resin can flow through the core. And I'm going to just place this down on that first skin. And now working symmetrically about that core, place the remaining plies to form the sandwich here. I'm trying to degum that spray adhesive. There are a lot of different varieties of spray adhesive good for different things. Many resin soluble, many not. This 3M Super 77 is sort of the basic. You want to use very little of it, but it does work and it's easy to get. But it is not resin soluble. So it leaves a contaminant in the finished part. I'm going to peel ply it. Again, using a very light spray working out the wrinkles in this peel ply. And here on the outflow side, um, normally you'd put a taper in the core or um, have some type of feature to allow for the, the converging top and bottom flow. Here I'm a little worried about the infusion filling unevenly, top to bottom skin, because it's on a heated table and also because of, I just don't know what's going to happen. So I use that little bit of green flow to tie the skins together in case they don't end up in the same place at the same time. And on the inlet side, I'm just using this spiral wrap and a little 3D printed puck. You can get these that are reusable. This one I just made up to fit the small spiral wrap I'm using. I'm going to place that in the middle, bridging the spiral wrap and cut some strips of peel ply here. You can see on the outlet side I'm using MTI hose which is totally unnecessary here. I just had it already wrapped around the vacuum tube so I decided to reuse it. MTI hose would work great if you were overlapping it almost on the laminate where the, the non-permeable um, cover would really help you out. So covering up that spiral wrap with peel ply on the inlet side cut the excess peel ply off and try and have as little as possible sort of uphill of that inlet tube to avoid trapped air. 
So little pieces of tape to bridge any gaps that might mess with the bag. Taping down that MTI hose. Again, spiral wrap covered in peel ply would be just, just as good. This is sort of a waste of MTI hose. And finally putting the bag down. Nothing new here, making sure that I've got it clean underneath where the tacky tape goes so I'm not getting any fibers um, that would cause a leak and making sure that the pleats are symmetrical about the part. There it is working it all down. The vacuum making sure everything is nice and tight and I'm putting in the resin feed hose here punching a little hole through the bag putting sealant tape around both the ends of the tube and also on the bag itself, jamming that through and making sure it's nice and tight. So there's the bit through the inlet side, the MTI hose attached. And I had a little bit of a leak, so I chased it down and found there was a little hole in the bag somewhere along this pleat, sealed it with sealant tape, and everything came down to a pretty nice bag that didn't drop like crazy when I unplug the vacuum. So here we are shooting in the resin. This is a Pro Set 114 infusion resin. The table is warm here because I'm doing it in a relatively cold room. It's about 90 Fahrenheit and I'm using a very small feed hose which will turn out to be problematic. You can see how tiny it is. Um, and this is going to take a lot of resin to fill this panel um, because of those grooves and I think I also made a mistake jamming the hose um, so that it butted up against some spiral wrap inside there um, and that restricted the flow so as it fills I'm looking at the clock saying I know I have this much working time on the resin and I'm not sure I'm going to fill the panel but it was the resin was relatively cool and so there was not a lot of exotherm issue in the pot so filling here I can see that's the distance between the flow on the bottom which is way ahead where the red mark is and the one on the surface I think this is because the table is warm and it's warmer on the bottom resin is feeding through and it's moving faster along the bottom surface so as it fills here At the bottom it's starting to poke through the resin there on the outlet side and as I feared it was not reaching the the end at the same time so that little piece of green flow I put in while laying it up should allow the air to escape out of that top skin you can see the air there coming out and this was a, a pretty poor way to do this Ideally, I would have lapped that green flow up onto the top skin or, in a perfect world, put a taper on the core um, or a flange or some type of tidy way to uh, finish that edge. You can see some air got trapped, stayed trapped, and the panel cured with that air in there. So I came back the next day, pulled off the bag. And turns out I didn't touch my MTI hose, so I'll be able to use that again, hopefully somewhere where it is appropriate. And there's the finished panel. It looks nice and solid. Pretty well stuck. I had to get a wedge under there. Popped off. And it looked pretty nice. There was a little bit of air in the surface on the mold side. You could see from the spray adhesive that sprayed on really nasty, um, some obvious blemishes there and there was definitely a little bit of air on the um, bag side bond line um, you can see some the core gro core grooves not filled which is not ideal the overall thickness is 21.6 millimeters 0.85 inches and the weight 567 grams or about 20 ounces per square foot for this one square foot panel Having a look at the finished panel, trimmed, you can see it's pretty nice. 
you can see the spray adhesive there the little run of it that uh, caused that bottom skin to look a little gross um, there was more air in here than would be ideal I think that having the fill get choked off at the very end yeah there's the spray adhesive you can see that that line of splatter that was not the best um, and this peel ply straight nylon peel ply was stuck on there pretty good but that's normal I think having faster resin feed would have helped um, you can see that biaxial printed in on the top skin but all in all it came out pretty nice um, yeah the issue just a bigger bigger feed hose moving a little faster no way I'm gonna bend this thing um, it's a nice example of a heavier panel than some of these I made a little nick in the corner trying to cut it with a jigsaw but um, it's a good example of a useful scale composite panel thanks for checking it out